Very cool. Okay. Looks like I'm by myself. No news on yet? Not yet. Well, hello. Got a few people popping in. Trying to sync up my videos. Mm -hmm. Hey there, Jeff. <laughs> see you, bud. Just trying to see who's in the room here. I'm trying to get that. Well, hello. Got a few people popping in. Hey, Deb. I don't know how I can do this. Can I go sideways? No, that makes me sideways. Rotate your phone. You can't hey, turn your yeah. phone. See you, bud. I'm trying to see who's in the room here. I'm trying to get that. Hello. Got any people popping in? There we go. Hey, Deb. I don't know how I can do this. Can I go sideways? No, Turning sideways sideways. doesn't work out well. There we go. Looks like there's a little bit of a delay on it. Turning sideways doesn't work out well. Oh, that's a laughter one. What? I didn't mean to click that. Turning sideways doesn't work out well. So we Turn off the sound. All right, I'm just standing here. Yeah. Is there anybody in there? Bring them on camera. Hey, Krista. Wow, hi, Dave. <laughs> How we doing? Cool. All right. Looks like we're starting to get a few people in the room. I'm going to give it a few minutes on account of people do... I was almost late myself. I had a few things going on. Looked up at the clock and said, Hey, i got to go get online. Your voice is trailing. So, okay. My voice is trailing. So I need to keep speaking up. Bring on the camera. Hey, Jack, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you. This is a pretty cool thing, man. I put up a little sheet behind me this time on account of I didn't want to have people busy looking at all the odds and ends I got in the back there. I, I collect cool stuff. Mainly toys. So, this time I want to talk about a little more expansion on the gatherings. Um, reiterate, hey, Purdy reiterate that uh, we're available to uh, help you guys with your gatherings if you would like to do them if you don't know how to do it contact me privately um, be happy to help you all right lots going on here last time I was able to see a different thing I don't know what I did but uh, I'm gonna learn how to do this thing I figured I'm going to do it every two weeks. Every two Thursdays, we'll go ahead and do half hour, 45 minute chats, maybe a little longer. Depends on what the conversation is, how it goes. 
uh, how much momentum we can gain and uh, go from there. So after we talked about the gatherings and you get to go and do your gatherings, then you can be in support of your people doing gatherings. Now, mind you, you can do four groups, four groups of uh, seven. And what that'll let you do is, you know, you'll get a lot of people out of that and then you get to be in support of them. And that's why it kind of branches outward and goes outward. So after the gathering happened, uh, Michael came back and he had some more instructions for Joe. And he started giving, uh, as you can, if you were following the visits on the website or on the Gathered Masters Children of Light page, um, you'd see that we were given quite a bit of stuff in a very short amount of time. So within about a two year span, we had received several sets of tuning forks and quite a few oils. Uh, the seven church oils, the four IM oils, which consists of uh, the Metatron, the Shekinah, the uh, Christ, and the uh, Sandalphon oils. Uh, well, excuse me, the Christ, Metatron, and the Shekinah and Michael oils. Uh, the Sandalphon is uh, a, an anointing oil that we use after you get gathered to bind you to the Tree of Life. And then, furthermore, we would use it in a process to... Uh, uh, renegotiate your contract and then we've come up uh, Joe has been given another process to do that as well where you just need two people um, what was important after for the masters after the gatherings was staying balanced balancing our tuning uh, <laughs> balancing our tuning balancing our chakras uh, on a daily basis um, I still do it uh, I do meditate every day um, some days I don't. I do skip days. Um, lately I've been going into the DAW off. Uh, that's been an interesting thing. Anytime you can reconnect with yourself and uh, get into a mode, uh, things start happening for you. Um, so we were giving these tuning forks and uh, told about the 12 chakras, not the uh, not just this, the seven main chakras that are spoken of in most teachings that talk about chakras around the world. By the way, chakra means wheel, for those of you that don't know what a chakra is. Um, and why we need to balance and align these things is that when you're creating a healing space, you need to have a clean space in order for that healing to happen. When, you're when you tune your chakras, you put your energy in a flow, in a circular motion, so that you will accept new energies coming in. And it just kind of books right in there with you. <clears throat> so... Now, Michael talked about 12 chakras, and there were two extra above and two extra below. The Alpha, the Omega, the Angelic, and the Terra. Um, and they make sense later on, you'll find, you know, as you learn to tune your chakras and start playing with them uh, and, 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 and uh, keep it, keeping them tuned on a regular basis, um, you get a better understanding of these things. Uh, also reading the information that came along with um, the uh, uh, teachings of that stuff. Um, lights kind of go on every time you look at it. Uh, Michael started with the heart because there's an equal amount of chakras above and an equal amount of chakras below. And, you know, my thing with this, I kind of developed over the years when I do tunings. I, I have a conversation that goes along with the tuning. And... Uh, it goes something like, you know, we open the heart because the heart is the center of our being. And once our heart is open, then we move down to the solar plexus chakra, which opens our mind. Now, with an open heart, your mind will open easily. So once your, your mind is open, then we move to the throat. And your throat controls your speak, and it, it governs your speak, excuse me. Now, once this, this is in balance, then you speak with more love and more affection, um, and more purpose and from there you move to just below the belly button you'll find the sacral uh, it's an orange ball of energy there and that one uh, is your emotions it governs your sexual energy area and your emotional area if you ever had a, an emotional information um, piece of information given to you it feels like you've been kicked in the gut that's this chakra going out of whack so th once you open your heart you open your mind you open your speak and this brings joy 
So once you move from the joy, out of joy, you move to the purple position, which is your third eye, and this governs creation in the divine mind, okay? So it kind of makes sense as you look at these going along. I'm sure that someone can explain it in much more of a detail, but I like a real simple way of doing it because then everybody kind of gets it. All right, so we're here at the creative position. Once your creation is out, you must make it so. So then that we move into the red chakra, which grounds in the physical. Wow, hey, that's JT. How you doing, buddy? Anyhow, um, grounds in the physical, all right? And it's red. From the red position, we move to the crown chakra. And the, the crown is our uh, connection to the universe, and it helps us be in service to others. And then, from those chakras, we move just between the uh, thighs and the knees, you'll find a ultra uh, infrared ball of energy there and that is called the omega chakra and has to do with the divine feminine it's associated with the shekinah okay you can also use the shekinah tuning fork to tune that chakra um, divine creation then we move up to about 18 inches above your crown this is a ultraviolet ball of energy resting and what you'll find there is the omega chakra I often talk about if you've heard a voice from above, this is the chakra it's pretty much coming from because it's the Metatron chakra or the masculine, divine masculine. And then from there you move down to just between the calves. There you'll find a silver ball of energy resting. And this is your groundedness to the earth, the Terra chakra, the earth chakra. This grounds you. Um, and from there you move about 36 inches up and you'll find the golden ball of energy, and that's the angelic. And while everybody knows what that one does, it opens up your communication to angels and helps you be open to their suggestion. So once that particular chakra is open and flowing, all of them are open and flowing, that leaves open for the last chakra, which is the divine chakra, or we call the God chakra. It has no color, no tone, no musical note, no tuning fork. It's your aura. <laughs> so. The importance of having those done on a regular basis is as you, the more you, you do it with yourself, the easier it is for you to fall into that space. The easier it is to come into that space, excuse me. Um, then when you go to work with essential oils or even more tuning forks or even uh, suggestion, meditation, quantum touch, Reiki, whatever cho you choose to do um, will work more efficiently when you are have an open space. What I'd like to talk about from there is, is we had been given uh, these seven church oils, okay? And he, the, the angels talked about what was in them and their vibrations and what they do. And there's a couple different things you can do with them. There's a seven-day anointing process to where you start on, you know, a certain day and you use a certain color and or a certain church oil. On those days for seven days and then that what that does is it acclimates you to the seven church oils raises your vibrations up quite high um, and then there was one thing given with all of the oils since we were given so many oils Michael had said that if you're going to use more than three oils at a time use my oil so if you're going to be using more than three of the church oils or the I am oils use some Michael and that you should be able to accept those vibrations without any issues or anything like that basically what happens is you kind of get blown out of whack your chakras can get blown out of whack it's not a big deal but it just kind of takes you time to rest and relax back into to where you need to be so that you can receive the healing that you're about right okay so the other thing you can do with the oils that Michael and the angels gave us was you can create a gate of grace on your on your patients or your your clients back you can also do this on their their head you place them you just some folks draw out a map I just I've done it so many times I know where to place the oils you just place the oils in the pattern of the gate of grace and you say something as you place the oil and they say something as they receive the oil and then you go through a process. It's quite interesting. Um, you can also do it on the head. Um, from there, you can use one of the four I am oils in the center, depending on which healing you're, you know, what what type of healing you're 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 working with. 
Um, the Shekinah oil is the physical healing. The Christ oil is the uh, emotional healing. The Metatron is the mental healing. And the spiritual doesn't need healing, so I don't believe there's an oil for that. So when you use those, I mean, if you want to put other oils in there, that's fine, but that's not what we were directed to do, so it ain't broken, why well, fix it? So anyhow, the my experience with that process has been really, really good. I've done it on quite a number of people. I've taught it to quite a number of people, and their results are very good. Uh, in the book, uh, Teaching the Masters, Joe... Um, uses that oil <clears throat> process on somebody with a cold um, and it's relieved almost instantaneously after the process. They couldn't breathe, couldn't see, and then they could function after that. Um, if it works that well with a, a head cold, imagine what it can do with other serious illnesses. Um, it, it's not a one-shot deal either. You know, it goes on a mental, emotional, and um, a physical uh, uh line so you may need to perform this particular process more than once you would go with I would recommend you start with the physical and then go into the emotional and then deal with the mental um, or whichever works for whoever's going through the process um, if it's mental issues obviously you would start with that particular one if it's physical issues you would start with that particular one go in the order that works with you um, real easy to do uh, and from there, you know, we've had uh, other sets of tuning forks that were introduced. And Michael had talked about or had taught Joe how to do a process called AccuTuning. Rather than talk about AccuTuning, there's something a little bit more important within the AccuTuning information that's usually overlooked. Something called angelic armor. Now, in the beginning, some of us thought that this is armor that we were putting on because we're warriors and we're going to go do combat. Well, no, we're not. Warrior actually kind of denotes what we're doing. We're not warriors. We're bringers of the light. Tillers of souls, if you really want to get technical. Um, this armor is armor we take off. And how we do this is we use a series of tuning forks and oils on regions of the body. Okay? And each area governs a specific function or vibration and region okay and how it was explained in the beginning was um, there are times in life where you have uh, some miraculous things happen like we've heard of 83 year old grandmothers picking a car up off of their four-year-old grandkid to save their life um, uh, people having miraculous things happen all of a sudden those are a time where your angelic armor is sh or your armor is shed for just that moment to where you can accomplish that which you need to do in that moment okay now here's why we do the angelic armor we remove those things so that you can be in the moment now and not have to be tricked into forgetting that you need to have your guard up all the bloody time it's pretty cool um, it's quite a process. <laughs> you know, there's like seven regions, I believe. There's that number again. Uh, a lot of the stuff we do is in sevens. Um, I've done that with several people, and their life changes were miraculous. And some of them I got to see, and some of them I only heard about. Um, so those are just just a small handful of the little things that we have that we could take out into the world and share with our friends and our family and bring all kinds of cool healing stuff to the world right now. You see, the whole idea of the angels bringing this stuff to us, in my opinion, now I could be wrong, I don't know, it's just an opinion, is we're creating a world that works for everybody. But it's an inside job, as Ken Elliott would say, you know, uh, it's an inside job. You got to go inside in order to accomplish anything that you want to do. And the angels give us all of these tools so that we can do just that. It's not something where you pick up these tools and you take them to your friends and your family and go, here, look. No, those were, you stumbled upon them for you. So use them on yourself. And then when your life starts changing, 
you'll be surprised that people will start coming to you and going, hey, what'd you do? That's when you pull out the tools and go, this. The next thing you know, you got people lining up and really wanting to have uh, something to do with, with what you're doing. And then they're embodying their part of the work and taking it forward somewhere else. It's not just one guy's um, way of doing it. You develop your way of presenting how you choose to share this work. And those are just some processes that you can use to open the door. Offering tunings for people's chakras, a very interesting thing. A lot of folks are very interested in tuning forks right now. It's quite a boom. The oils, boy, they smell awesome. They feel great. No, you don't want to splash a bunch of them on you because it's not your everyday ordinary oil, you know. But they really work. And they're very efficient. And the nice thing that I've noticed about all of the work that we're doing is when you introduce it to some other type of work or incorporate it, it complements it, okay? So it brings out the essence of what other people are doing or what you're doing, something you may have studied long years doing, and this can help essentially bring that up and more outwards. So... Um, I haven't talked much about the visits. I wanted to talk about the, the, the tuning forks and using those on yourself, and the, especially the angelic armor. Um, I've done that process on myself and on other people, and it's a really powerful thing. really helps a lot. Um, it's obtainable. Now, here's the thing about the forks and the oil. There's a cost to them. Yeah, no kidding. You go to any class, any type of thing, they're, they're going to charge you for what, what they have, and, and usually they're going to charge a lot. Um, in this case, it's really not that expensive. On our chakra set, right now, there are, I think they're 175 bucks, and if you find the harmonic spectrum, they're right around 200 bucks a set, and no color, no instructions, no nothing. So really, Joe's got a sweet deal on, on these things for us. I'm not trying to do a marketing gig, but if I'm talking about products that you need to use to help further your uh, development, there's going to be a cost associated with it. And if you can't afford it right now, open your heart to things. Allow yourself to have it. When I first got involved in this, I didn't have anything to work with. And here comes all of these forks. And I'm like, not in a position to go purchasing a whole lot of stuff. And I placed my mind to it, set my mind to it, and allowed myself to receive the things that I deserve. I went boldly into the world knowing all I desired was mine, and guess what? Next thing you know, I'm carrying around a backpack full of tuning forks and oils, and I'm doing healings all over the place, traveling, having a good time. Um, it's not a big profit center, I'll tell you that. Um, not meant to be. This work is not about money. This work is about living abundantly in every aspect of your life, uh, living prosperous in your relationships and living abundant in, in, in your home life and everything that you do because you're a magnificent child of God. How are we doing on time here? We're in 24 minutes. Wow, I went four minutes longer than last time. Hey, Purdy, you too, babe. Um, a few of the folks that I've taught these processes to, because I used to do classes, which I'm actually resurrecting. I'm going back out and starting to do more stuff. I have things scheduled. I have things going. Um, ready to rock and roll. I'll travel to wherever you want me to come teach as well. Be happy to come out and hang and party and do all that good stuff with you. And we're just going to laugh and have a good time. Um, is uh, uh, we get to uh, enlighten people in a way that we didn't have before. And what I noticed with some of them, the ones that took the work and did something with it, they have a different quality of life. Now, they may not have gotten gathered. They may not even come, you know, may not come to the event. They may never look at the book again or any of the visits or any of that stuff, but the tools that they utilized in the short period of time that they got to work with us is going to carry them on for a long time. I know a few people that have incorporated just the tuning forks into their lives, and it's, it's changed them dramatically. I have a... Uh, a uh, woman who just purchased a bunch of tuning forks from us. And I got to talk to her. And I'd like to talk to these people sometimes because when they get them, you know, they need to know you can give me a call or give anybody, you know, there's a whole bunch of people that can share about tuning forks. Um, she was in a, a 
she has some really bad health issues and nothing's working and she was turned on to some of the oils and tuning forks and it the small session that she had dramatically changed her life and then she made a pretty decent investment in the rest of that stuff um, and uh, she's looking forward to being in participation with her own healing so um, there is a lot of results that can happen um, I'm running out of things I had uh, some ideas that I wanted to bring up does anybody have any questions I'm probably gonna have to wait a little bit on account of the long um, delay that's going on oh this is cool you can bring people on camera anyhow well I think we're pretty well good I wanted to reiterate about the visits or I mean the visits the uh, gatherings and that you have a lot of support if you choose to go ahead and uh, go out and, and have a gathering um, it's important and we have an opportunity right now so uh, oh by the way I did talk to Joe. I was kind of wondering about next year. He is looking at Colorado. He has a group working on uh, getting uh, a space. As soon as we have, he has a space uh, tied down, he will be making an announcement. Um, I'm sure the dates will come along with that announcement. So um, that's moving quite well. Uh, it's... Uh, better than happening in March or April <laughs> so all right I don't see any uh, questions here it sounds like it looks like everything's kind of mellowing out I'm glad you guys stopped in to listen to me talk about some of this stuff I'm gonna go ahead and do another one in two weeks so tell your friends about it and you can even write me beforehand uh, on Facebook and ask me questions and I'll address your questions on video so, you're welcome, Purdy. I love you, sweetie. Hey, Ma. <laughs> she just pops in when I'm popping out. I guess dinner's done. <laughs> Anyhow, take it easy, everybody. Bless your hearts. Have a great week. I'll see you in two weeks. Thursday, 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern. Have an awesome night. Bless your hearts.